Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. Welcome. This is my studio. This is a studio tour. Thank you, Daniel James, for giving me the idea. Uh, he did one, and I'm like, why don't I do one? Because I'm pretty proud of this room. I like how far I've come with it, what it looks like, what it sounds like. And now you get to see in it. So let's do the tour. I'm going to flip the camera around. I can't use my AirPods as microphones, unfortunately, with, without purchasing an app that's like really expensive. So hopefully the sound quality won't be too crap. And uh, let's just get to it. Try and hold the camera steady. I've done this video a few times now and it's way too jerky. So let's be nice and slow. Acoustic panels, these are important. I think a lot of people highlight their gear and stuff like that when they do one of these videos, but I wanna highlight, you know, the, the room. Um, so it's important to have a nice quiet room uh, and have materials and stuff around it that can catch reflections and reverberations coming from your speakers, your studio monitors, because you want to hear a pretty objective sound. You want your room to be pretty quiet, not dead, like an anechoic chamber, but quiet. Um, and these panels help me get there. These are from Prime Acoustic. It's a 12 pack that I bought. Um, so it has two big fat bass traps, which go in the corner here. And then we also have um, some slender ones over here, which fit the wall like this. And I put them to kind of together. Uh, like that next to each other. And then we have a cluster, a kind of quadrant that I made. These are all individual ones, which I put into the wall uh, with some 3M little sticky thingies. So these are here to catch the first reflections coming out of the speakers. And if you don't know about that, um, go online. There's tons of acoustic tips and tricks and stuff like that. But anyway, this just contributes to a quieter room overall. Not a soundproof room, but a quiet room. And we have the carpet as well, which is, I guess, oriental. I don't know but it's nice and we have on the bottom here some uh, stuff where we have some vinyl little vinyl collection this is not my collection this is my girlfriend's collection a great record something by todd rundgren go buy this album it's amazing books about audio soon a plant will be in here there's nothing in there now wireless router fascinating spire uh ukulele some wires and a light this is like kind of a backlight which just helps for videos and stuff two bins hard drives miscellaneous wires camera bag um yeah tractor control s4 this is brand new this will feature on the channel very soon i just have to get my stuff together and do it yamaha acoustic guitar more for aesthetics than anything else really at this point um i think what i'm trying to get at here is that if the room you're working in feels good and is you and is your aesthetic it'll probably be a better experience for you when you're in here as opposed to having a sterile room that looks clinical and is kind of boring you don't need a huge budget but just like make it look like some somewhere you want to be in and then you'll probably want to make music in it some lps on the wall nick drake bob dylan my girlfriend uh her albums again simon garfunkel she's kind of a hippie glass not good terrible but i can't really do much about this i'm renting here so but this is a super reflective surface surface this is not going to absorb anything and this is bad news bears just be aware of it though another panel and now i guess to the more exciting part of the room this side um keyboard complete this is the mark ii uh 61 key does a job pretty awesome uh people who want to know about this keyboard you can look at a video that i did a little while ago we'll put it in the top right corner I did a, a video on like kind of review on it and I did like another hack on how to use uh, contact from within it. This, this is the most important thing in this room, swear to God, to be on the room. It's the chair. You're going to be in a chair, like, forget the whole like sitting as a new smoking. They debunk that. Sitting is fine. Just stand up every now and then. But you're going to be sitting in a chair. I don't know anyone that stands and does music. You're going to be sitting in a chair a lot. So you better be comfortable and it better be a good chair. And this is a really good one from Ikea. It's lasted me a long time. Um, if we go back here, you'll notice that I have this little t-shirt behind the scenes here. So this was done because on the back, I put my head back so many times that it was starting to chip off the vinyl and it got kind of gross. And I tried to put some black nail polish on it, but it wouldn't really hide it well enough for the video that I use, the camera that I use. So my girlfriend put a black t-shirt on here. And so if you look at some of the videos I do for, for my work, for my job, uh, you have this in the background, but it's super subtle and nobody's noticed yet. So anyway, a little behind the scenes. Um, we have one light here, which is LED dimmable, which is nice. And another for videos, which is right there. And these are Amazon, came kind of cheapish, cheap for lights anyway. I opted for these guys instead of soft boxes. Maybe I should have gone for soft boxes, but whatever. Solo BE, uh, number one from Focal. And the other one is over here. 
They're sat atop isoacoustic risers, and that just helps, you know, mitigate control against vibrations coming from low frequency output from these speakers going against the table, vibrating, just causing an unwelcome listening experience and maybe throwing off what you think you're hearing when uh, the sound leaves um, these guys, the crossovers. Uh, we have Yamaha NS10Ms, and these are in the wrong orientation. They should be other way so that the letters, you know, are kind of flush with the table. Landscape mode, if you will, but, you know, there's no room and you have to make do. You gotta do what you can. But uh, these are my secondary monitors, so to speak. Uh, my primary monitors are not the Focals. My primary monitors are these guys. Um, these are Sennheiser HD650s. These are these are incredible. These are, you know, get a pair of these. I know they've come up with other iterations. I haven't heard the, you know, 660s or 660s or whatever they're up to the, now. But these are kind of industry standard for a reason. They're excellent. Um, and they're just great. I love them. And this is what I listen to everything on. And then Focal and then uh, NS10Ms from uh, Yamaha. So what else do we have here? So we have the Sony. This is what I use to film the videos. This is a Sony a7 III. A lot of people opt for the GH5, but I wanted a camera that would take good still photos as well. The GH does a pretty good job, but um, the Sony's great. And on this is the glass is a native Sony lens 24 to 105 right there um it's pretty darn good it's what i shoot the videos for work on and i also have a 85 mil which is a prime lens better for portraits and stuff like that not really good for shooting videos where i want a lot of stuff in the background and, and all that but anyway we have sla this is a studio linear amplifier that's the model anyway but this is by art um it's a pretty good amp this is what powers the ns10ms and it just does the job uh canadian company sounds really good if you can Try and go for an expensive amp if you're going to be powering NS10Ms like a Bryson or a Hafler. Those are good options. They're a little expensive, but the amp is really what's going to be integral to the sound coming out of those speakers. Don't opt for a suit. SLA is, is reasonably priced. If you're going for NS10Ms, the secondary monitors, you know, don't skip out on the amp. SLA is great, um, but don't go lower than that if you want to power them. We have the Apollo 8 Quad. Um, way more outputs and inputs than I need, but uh, a lot of DSP, a lot of power to run a lot of plugins, and it's great. It looks great. Um, and, you know, I can quickly turn it on, off, um, go to my alts, my NS10Ms, uh, change the metering. You know, I, mono is my function key here, so I can switch between mono and stereo really easily. So that's kind of nice. Um, Mac Pro with a bunch of you know, little hard drives and stuff coming out of it. These have my sample libraries, and this is a, a T5 for work that I use. Um, keyboard plugs in. Uh, the trackpad, however, is wireless. I love this thing. Um, a lot of people don't like trackpads, but I think that they make me a little bit more efficient. What else do we have? Um, yeah, monitor, LG. I don't know how many inches this is. Logitech, uh, Carl Zeiss, I don't know that's important um maybe one day there will be uh more stuff more keyboards more i don't know uh synthesizers i don't have stuff here that i don't use i use everything that you see and it's pretty minimal for some people this might be too much but for me it's it's just enough i don't need a lot of other stuff cluttering up this room it's pretty small it has limitations that i think make it a good place to be because there's only so much stuff i can fit in here and only so much extra things uh that i could fit in you know to kind of uh, make me feel better about making music. I can't put a lot of rack mounted gear in. I can't put a lot of keyboards or anything. This is pretty much everything I use. It's all I need. There's a pedal down here, uh, kind of dusty and crappy, sorry, but it is what it is. Big long table from Ikea to accommodate a lot of stuff on the surface, so that's kind of nice. AirPods charging, very exciting. But yeah, that's my studio. This is it for now. When I add stuff, I'll do another little tour, but Man, compared to where I was a year ago, a year plus ago, this is a pretty big step up. Um, so I'm proud of this. Proud of it, you know, how it's come along. If there's anything that you see that I didn't really call out or mention in the video, let me know. I'm noticing now that I have this microphone here. This is an AT2020 USB-I. And this is a USB microphone, duh, um, with a pop shield pop filter that is not 
you know, plugged in or no, it, it, someone gave me this. So I kind of like slotted it there. Um, but it does the job, you know, is metal or cotton better? I have no idea. It's easier to wash this if you want to wash it. Uh, and this broadcasting arm is awful it's from Amazon. I have to update it pretty soon, but it's just terrible anyway. But I think that's it. That's the whole kind of studio. Um, thanks for watching. Any comments or anything you want to know about, you know, let me know. Um, I'm headed to Boston tomorrow, so you probably won't see me for a week. And I thought I'd get a video up before I left. And if you noticed, I've been doing a lot more videos. And it feels good to be putting out content that's, you know, frequent and stuff people want to see. So, uh, sorry about the quality on this one. It had to drop at some point. I didn't know how else to film this whole studio experience thing, so... Yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.